improved algorithms, powerful computers, and an increase in digitized data have fueled a revolution in machine learning. With new techniques in the 2010s resulting in rapid improvements in tasks including manipulating language. Software models are trained to learn, by using thousands or millions of examples in a structure, loosely based on the neural architecture of the brain, one architecture used in natural language processing is a neural network based on a deep learning model that was first introduced in 2017, the transformer. GPTN models are based on this transformer-based deep learning neural network architecture. On June 11, 2018, OpenAI researchers and engineers posted their original paper on generative models, language models, artificial intelligence systems that could be pre-trained with an enormous and diverse corpus of text via datasets. The authors describe how language understanding performances in natural language processing NLP, were improved in GPTN through a process of generative pre-training of a language model on a diverse corpus of unlabeled text. In February 2020, Microsoft introduced its Turing Natural Language Generation, which was claimed to be the largest language model ever published at 17 billion parameters. It performed better than any other language model. On May 28, 2020, an R14 preprint by a group of 31 engineers and researchers at OpenAI described the development of GPT-3, a third-generation state-of-the-art language model. The team increased the capacity of GPT-3 by over two orders. 60% of the weighted pre-training dataset for GPT-3 comes from a filtered version of Common Crawl, consisting of 410 billion byte pair encoded tokens. Nine other sources are 19 billion tokens from WebText2, representing 22%. 55 billion tokens from Books2 representing 8%, and 3 billion tokens from Wikipedia representing 3%. GPT-3 was trained on hundreds of billions of words and is capable of coding in CSS, JSX, Python, among others. GPT-4 will not be any bigger than GPT-3 but will use more compute resources. This is an interesting announcement considering the vocal voices against the perils of having large language models and how they affect both the environment. Some expectations are for GPT-4 to also grow and contain up to a trillion parameters. However, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman has said that it will not be larger than GPT-3 but will be far more efficient through enhanced data algorithms and fine-tuning also alluded to a future GPT-5. The point being that neural networks have a long way to run in size and sophistication. We are indeed in the midst of an age of AI acceleration. The AI-driven transition to a largely automated world will take time, perhaps a few decades. This will bring many changes, with some being highly disruptive. Adjustments will not be easy. This is GPT-4, the device which will change our understanding of what modern technology can do. It will have 100 trillion parameters which is 500x the size of GPT-3. The company OpenAI, was born to tackle the challenge of achieving artificial general intelligence, an AI capable of doing anything a human can do. Such technology would change the world as we know it. It could benefit us all drastically if used adequately, but could become the most devastating weapon in the wrong hands. That's why OpenAI took over this quest. To ensure it'd benefit everyone evenly, the company's goal is to advance digital intelligence in the way that is most likely to benefit humanity as a whole. However, the magnitude of this dilemma makes it arguably the single biggest scientific enterprise humanity has put its hands upon. Although all the advances in computer science and artificial intelligence, no one knows how to solve it or when it'll happen. Some argue deep learning isn't enough to achieve AGI. Stuart Russell, a computer science professor at Berkeley and AI pioneer, argues that focusing on raw computing power misses the point entirely. We don't know how to make a machine really intelligent, even if it were the size of the universe. OpenAI, in contrast, is confident that large neural networks fed on large datasets and trained on huge computers are the best way towards AGI. Greg Brockman, OpenAI's CTO, said we think the most benefits will go to whoever has the biggest computer. And that's what they did. They started training larger and larger models to awaken the hidden power within deep learning. The first non-subtle steps in this direction were the release of GPT and GPT-2. These large language models would set the groundwork for the star of the show, GPT-3. A language model 100 times larger than GPT-2, 
at 175 billion parameters. GPT-3 was the largest neural network ever created at the time, and remains the largest dense neural net. Its language expertise and its innumerable capabilities were a surprise for most. And although some experts remained skeptical, large language models already felt strangely human. It was a huge leap forward for open AI researchers to reinforce their beliefs and convince us that AGI is a problem for deep learning. Open AI believes in the scaling hypothesis. Given a scalable algorithm, the transformer in this case, the basic architecture behind the GPT family, there could be a straightforward path to AGI that consists of training increasingly larger models based on this algorithm. But large models are just one piece of the AGI puzzle. Data stopped being a bottleneck when the machine learning community started to unveil the potential of unsupervised learning. That, together with generative language models and a few shot task transfer, solved the large datasets problem for OpenAI. They only needed huge computational resources to train and deploy their models and they'd be good to go. That's why they partnered with Microsoft in 2019. They licensed the big tech company so they could use some of OpenAI's models commercially in exchange for access to its cloud computing infrastructure and the powerful GPUs they needed. But GPUs aren't built specifically to train neural nets. The gaming industry developed these chips for graphic processing, and the AI industry simply took advantage of its suitability for parallel computation. OpenAI wanted the best models and the best datasets, and they also wanted the best computers chips. GPUs weren't enough. Many companies realized it too, and started to build in-house specialized chips designed to train neural nets. However, a pure software company, like OpenAI can hardly integrate hardware design and fabrication. That's why they took another route, using third-party AI-specific chips. Here's where Cerebra's systems enter the scene. This chip company already built the largest chip ever to train large neural networks in 2019. First, Cerebrus has built again the largest chip in the market, the Wafer Scale Engine 2, WSE2. It is tilde 22 cm on each side and has 2.6 trillion transistors. In comparison, Tesla's brand new training tiles have 1.25 trillion transistors. Cerebrus found a way to condense computational power efficiently, and so WSE2 has 850,000 cores, the computational unit. They also solved the heating problem with a novel cooling system, and also managed to create an efficient I.O. flow of data. There aren't many uses for ultra-specialized super-expensive mega-powerful chips like WSE2. Training large neural networks is one of them. And so Cerebras talked to OpenAI. From talking to OpenAI, GPT-4 will be about 100 trillion parameters. That won't be ready for several years. Since GPT-3, there's been a lot of expectation around OpenAI and its next release. Now we know it'll come out in a few years and it'll be extremely big. It'll be more than 500 times the size of GPT-3. You heard that right, 500 times. So, what can we expect from GPT-4? 100 trillion parameters is a lot. To understand just how big that number is, let's compare it with our brain. The brain has around 80 to 100 billion neurons, GPT-3's order of magnitude, and around 100 trillion synapses. GPT-4 will have as many parameters as the brain has synapses. The sheer size of such a neural network could entail qualitative leaps from GPT-3 we can only imagine. We may not be able to even test the full potential of the system with current prompting methods. However, comparing an artificial neural network with the brain is a tricky business. The comparison seems fair, but that's only because we assume artificial neurons are at least loosely based on biological neurons. A recent study published in Neuron suggests otherwise. They found that at least a five-layer neural network is needed to simulate the behavior of a single biological neuron. That's around 1,000 artificial neurons for each biological neuron. But even if GPT-4 isn't as powerful as our brain, it sure will leave a few surprises. Unlike GPT-3, it probably won't be just a language model. So I hope this gave you an insight into how the GPT-4 device will pinch AGI forever. Thanks for watching guys and feel free to leave some feedback, drop a like and hit subscribe if you haven't already.